Good morning, everyone. Thank you, guys. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I'd like to thank Governor Murphy for uh, taking the time to host this ceremony and uh, his endless support. So thank you. Uh, and for everyone else for uh, attending the graduation ceremony for the New Jersey Transit Locomotive Engineer Class of 1902. My name is Tyler Morris, and I'm proud to be a class, a part of the class 1902. Yeah. And it is my honor to be the guest speaker. I'd like to thank New Jersey Transit, and especially my instructor, Scott Carter, for giving me this opportunity. So thank you guys so much. I would also like to express my gratitude to Scott's LETV instructors for their tireless work and effort to train us, mentor us, and lead us to this point of success in the LATP program. I would also like to personally thank all the families and loved ones that supported us through this challenging process. I know I speak for everyone when I say this. Uh, we wouldn't be here today without your endless love and support, so thank you guys so much. Thank you. <laughs> Growing up, I was raised around sports, and soccer was the game that I fell in love with. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to participate and be a part of some incredible teams throughout my childhood. And I was blessed to be given the opportunity to continue my playing career at the Division I level at Rutgers University. The student athlete lifestyle was demanding and arduous, but it prepared me for life and ultimately provided me with the tools that I needed to succeed. What I once looked upon as a game, I now look upon as one of life's greatest teachers. I learned discipline and commitment as well as the true value of teammates. When I graduated from Rutgers, I never would have imagined that I would ever join a team that could ever mean as much. But I did, and you guys are here with me today. We had our ups, like the euphoric feeling of passing NORAC and our first light engine move. And just as any team, we had our downs. Right like losing a few classmates along the way, battling through a few snowstorms, and most of all, doing this all during a pandemic. But we, did not, we were not deterred. And these challenges only made our bond stronger. It made the journey ever more rewarding as we pushed towards the ultimate goal, promotion. And there is another group of teammates that I would rather have taken this journey with. So thank you guys so much. It's nearly impossible to put into words just how challenging the New Jersey Transit Locomotive Engineer program is. The best way I could describe it is if a military academy and university graduate school had a baby. Seriously. We have to have dedication, commitment, and precision, similar to the military. But we also have to study, work with our instructors, ask questions, take good notes, and be a good student, just as any graduate school. You quickly realize just how great a responsibility it is to hold the title of a locomotive engineer. For most of us, this realization set in when we first heard these three words, clear your desk. <laughs> For those of you who don't understand, that meant one thing, a quiz or an exam, and there are a lot of them. This is where the concept of becoming a team animated itself. We're in uncharted territory, surrounded by complete strangers, most of us with no railroad experience or background in the field whatsoever. And we are all faced with the task of learning a new language we hadn't known existed a week prior. And in that moment of doubt, we chose to band together and to learn from each other. 
and I believe that personifies what a team is. This program truly reflects just how much New Jersey Transit and the state of New Jersey have invested in us to be the very best. A journey that began 20 months ago. Strangers, anxious, wide-eyed, and naive, unknowingly jumping headfirst into the greatest challenge of our lives. Today we stand here before you as locomotive engineers, honored to be able to share our story and our experience with you. I no longer look at my classmates as strangers, or even friends for that matter. They're my brothers. I've learned more about life from them than they could ever realize. And I'm proud to share this moment with them. Thank you all of those in attendance, and thank you New Jersey Transit for entrusting us to serve the great state of New Jersey. Thank you all so much. I just found another reason I love Tyler. Let's give Tyler one more time. Great job, man. I hope the guy who put the tent up went through as much training as the engineers have gone through to make sure it stays up. Carol King, I'm dating myself, uh, would remind us that I'm feeling the earth move under my feet. Um, to, let's hear it again. Tyler Morris, uh, great job, man. <laughs> to you and your fellow classmates, while I thank you for those, that extraordinarily warm introduction, I also want to thank you for making the decision to be a part of the future of NJ Transit. I'm more convinced than ever that when all is said and done, NJ Transit will be the turnaround story of New Jersey, and each of you will be a huge reason why. I just found another reason I love Tyler, because he, like me and so many other soccer fans, thought the Super League might have been the stupidest idea ever foisted upon any professional sport. So uh, another reason I love him. I'm honored to join NJ Transit Board Chair and Transportation Commissioner Diane gutierrez Scacchetti. NJ Transit President and CEO to my left, Kevin Corbett. And they join me in extending congratulations to you as you, if you'll please excuse the pun, reach the end of the line in your classroom training to be a part of the next generation of rail engineers. I'm also honored to have another dear friend with us, the guy right here, Senate Transportation Committee Chair, Senator Pat Dignan. Pat. Someone, Pat, I think you've been with us for virtually every one of these new engineer recognition ceremonies. Bless you, man, and thank you. Another guy who has been here day in and day out, this man to my left, the general chairman of Smart Transportation Division, Local 60, Jerome Johnson's in the house, Jerome. And to you and our brothers and sisters in labor, and a particular shout out to a dear friend down from Hudson County, Barry Kushner. Barry, we love you. Thank you. To our members of law enforcement, uh, and I'm honored to be wearing the NJ Transit uh, Police uh, uh, kit today, we thank you for everything you do to keep us safe. So we're here today because everyone who I just named, including yours truly, made a commitment to restoring NJ Transit to the place it needs to be and where we know it can be. New Jersey's commuters demand and deserve a safe, modern, and reliable rail network. And today we move ever closer to delivering on this promise. Safe, because our, under our administration and Diane and Kevin's leadership, NJ Transit completed the installation, the testing, and the certification of the federally mandated positive train control technology that had been left to languish. Modern, because this administration has undertaken the much needed capital program to deliver new and more efficient locomotive and passenger cars to replace what had been derided by many as an aging and broken down prone fleet. And reliable, because we are investing in the critical positions we need to ensure on time operations with fewer cancellations due to lack of available crew. In short, we are investing in you all. As the nine of you graduate from your classroom training today, and with the presupposition that you will excel in your final check rides, 
and thanks to the tremendous training team. I want to give them a shout out. I have no doubt that you will join the ranks of New Jersey's rail engineers and that number will grow to 393. For the first time in more than a decade, this organization will have a full roster of rail engineers. For the first time in years, a call-out or a sick day won't collapse into a litany of train cancellations. When we say a train will operate, we'll have the team available to put that train into operation. In just three years, we have done something almost as impossible as completing 11 years' work, work, worth of work on positive train control in just three years' time. We will have graduated a total of 103 new rail engineers. And with each graduation that I have now had the pleasure to celebrate alongside, we have chipped away at the shortage we knew we needed to fill. We know this isn't an easy process, and deliberately so. For us to restore NJ Transit to be the best, we need each of you to be the best. And looking around, I think we have met that goal. But let's not think for a moment that just because we've now exceeded the magic engineer roster number of 390 that we're going to stop. Not even close. After you, there are five other classes running concurrently. Three more classes are going to get underway before the end of this year. This means that going forward, as veteran engineers retire or other, others leave to pursue other avenues, we will have someone there ready to take their place. We know all too well what happened when the prior administration let the engineer ranks dwindle and wither. What happened? Performance cratered, as did commuter satisfaction and faith. Now that hole that was left for us has been filled. A better day is breaking at NJ Transit. You were also, and I probably don't even need to say this, but let me say it, you are joining the ranks of our engineers at a critical time. Over the past year, NJ Transit Rail has been a vital service for many of our frontline and essential workers to get to their jobs. And by the way, so is NJ Transit Bus. Whether they be healthcare workers, retail workers, educators, first responders, or any one of the countless New Jerseyans whose hard work has kept our state together throughout this pandemic. And that group of heroic essential workers absolutely includes the tremendous women and men of NJ Transit. And as a reminder that we have not finished the job as it relates to this pandemic and that we are still in the fight, let me just say today alone, 2,895 positive cases, a positivity rate that is still above 10 percent, with the heaviest of hearts reporting 31 new losses of life confirmed. There are, and this is good news for the first time in many, many weeks, fewer than 2,000 folks in our hospitals with COVID, 1,997. We need that number to keep going down. 219 people walked into a hospital in New Jersey with COVID yesterday. The good news is 288 live patients walked out. And the so-called rate of transmission is at 0.93, and we need it to stay under 1%. So back to NJ Transit. Its ri rail ridership may only currently be at about 25% of what it was pre-pandemic, but we know that eventually and soon, many will be finding their way back onto the trains. When they do, they're going to find a whole new team ready to make sure they get to where they need to go safely and on time. They'll find an NJ Transit that is customer-oriented and focused on improving the customer experience. They're going to find friendly faces ready to serve them and their fellow riders. They're going to find you and your fellow engineers. I cannot thank you all enough for your willingness to set aside whatever it was you were doing previously to take the chance to become a rail engineer at NJ Transit. I thank your families for supporting your decision. I thank the NJ, tra uh, NJ Transit training staff for preparing you for the job ahead. NJ Transit is indeed a team. It is a family. Welcome to that family, and I know you're going to all make us incredibly proud. Again, congratulations to each and every one of you. With that, please help me welcome 
the chair of NJ Transit and the commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Diane Gutierrez Schicchetti. Good morning. It is always such a privilege for me first to be here with the governor and the senator and Kevin and Jerome and the team. Uh, but it is more of a privilege for me to be among the first to welcome you to the ranks of New Jersey Transit. Tyler, you did a great job representing your class. I think what I heard from Tyler the most that was most impressive is the concept of team and brotherhood. You are now in the ranks of one of the most important and critical jobs in New Jersey. Welcome to the ranks of the essential employee. We work through everything. We don't stop. We never quit. And the fact that you have made it through these 20 months, through a pandemic, through a harsh winter, through tough training, is a testament to your character and to what we believe we will see from you as you continue on and your job as a locomotive engineer. And as Governor Murphy said when he took office, he made a commitment to improve customer service and the reliability of New Jersey Transit in all of its modes. But train service sticks out the most. It's the most visible. And when it goes wrong, it's big. Kevin had an arduous task, and we supported him. And Governor, I think I can say fairly, with the addition of more than 100 well-trained locomotive engineers on the New Jersey Transit team, we certainly hope we are building it back better. Having the personnel we need to get our rail customers where they want to go, when they want to get there, is critical to providing the service NJ Transit riders deserve. Governor talked about a lot of people you carry, first responders, medical providers, retail workers. But you also take the mom who's bringing her child to daycare, the grandparents who maybe are caregivers to the grandchildren. Your job means so much to so many. So I hope every morning when you get up and get ready for work or every evening, depending on when you're working, and you look in that mirror, you don't just consider yourself a locomotive engineer. You consider yourself an essential part of New Jersey's transportation system, a system that must work together to be successful. So Tyler, you don't have just a small team in brotherhood. You have a very large brotherhood. You have a family of transportation workers who stick together who work to be the best that New Jersey has to deliver. And I believe each one of you, as you continue in your career, will feel that commitment, not only amongst each other, but from Kevin, from myself, from the governor and his administration. We believe in you. And we know the job you do will mean so much to everyone that they will also come to believe in you too. Best wishes, always be safe, and we will always be here to back you up. Diane, thank you. Diane, you could move mountains. May I ask you one favor? It's April 22nd and frostbite is setting in. Can we do something about the weather? I'll make a call. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Diane, so much for your words and for your leadership. Now, please help me welcome the Chief Executive Officer, the President of NJ Transit, another great leader, Kevin Corbett. Uh, thank you, Governor. Uh, this is truly a, a special day. And, uh, you know, as, as uh, the commissioner uh, said uh, you know, about having, uh, having your back, there's no one during the darkest days when we were coming in three years ago, I look back, the governor, uh, Commissioner gutierrez Cachetti, Senator Dignan, Jerome, we were working through all batch of issues. Um, they had my back, and I can assure you that the whole team of management, we're going to have your back uh, when you're out there. Um, I'd certainly, uh, Tyler, uh, liked your opening remarks. Uh, I recall the last ceremony, uh, our, our class speaker for, uh, was uh, Pat Boylan. Some of you may know, remember Pat. Uh, I was actually uh, in the head end. He came in on 6610. He was on the head end at a multi-level. And uh, I got to say, you know, having him solo, being up there in the, in the cab car with him, I was like, wow, this is weird. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll be seeing you out on the road, but it's, it's, it's amazing how, how quickly you guys put, progress through the, uh, and how far you've come over the last 20 months. Um, you know, uh, Tyler, you certainly have uh, big shoes to fill, and I'm, uh, I have no doubt that you'll do a great job. Um, 
I think you know, today's ceremony is, is special, not only because of the culmination of, of everything that you've done to get to this point, um, but as the governor alluded to, it's also a culmination three years of efforts to replenish our severely depleted ranks. Uh, so, uh, you know, congratulations for making this milestone. Uh, particularly, as Tyler mentioned, you look at it through the corona, you know, coronavirus pandemic, you know, the, the uh, you know, incredible winter, uh, and you guys just persevered through that. That was great. But I think it's also, as, as the governor touched on, you know, this is the first time we've made that sort of magic number, you know, surpassing the 390 uh, active locomotive uh, engineers that we consider a full roster. Um, you know, as it's you know, when you think of it, it's been 11 locomotive engineer training classes. You know, we started with five in 2018, three in 2019, another three in 2020. And as the governor said, uh, you know, we're, we're going to keep going so that we make sure we're never in that situation again. We'll have enough to cover for uh, classes. We have three coming up this year to make sure we cover for attrition. Don't worry, there'll still be overtime. But, you know, to make sure that we have attrition so as people retire to make sure that we have that bench that, that we need. And again, if you look, uh, you know, all total, that's uh, since we started, that's 103 new locomotive engineers, and contra contrasting that to a net loss of 61 engineers uh, in the eight years uh, before that. So that's you know tremendous progress. Uh, and really, it's a great turnaround story that uh, you know may not get all the headlines, but it's it is critical to getting people to, to work, to see family, and uh, I think it's important if everyone remembers in the public that it's not just one engineer, one trip. The average engineer is going to do four trips a day, and if you think that's, you know, roughly a thousand people per train, that those, you know, one person, one shortage is going to be, uh, on one assignment, could be 4,000 people who are stranded. So the importance uh, of every, having every engineer available, making sure they have time to rest, et cetera, it's really, uh, it's great that we're finally made this um, milestone. Um, I, I, would, I would say that also for, uh, all our engineers that today, uh, you're joining a very different organization than the one that uh, I joined three years ago. Um, you know, you look as the governor talked about, you're all aware of PTC, you're, you're, you've seen it now starting to function, uh, you know, properly and fully and working through all those, the bugs as you were going through your training. Um, but we are now helping, we are, we met the deadline as the governor said, and we're helping to lead the industry nationally in setting the next generation of PTC. We can call it PTC 2.0 or, or whatever, but that will make the, the nation's rail system even safer. Um, it, it, as the governor touched on a little bit, we, there was no relief in sight for aging 40 to 50 year old rail cars and locomotives. And uh, now, in just two years, we'll have the 113 new uh, self propelled multi levels that we'll be taking delivery of. And just uh, a few weeks ago, the commissioner and I joined the governor in Newark celebrating the first uh, arrival of the 25 new dual mode. Uh, locomotives that, that are joining our fleet. Um, it's great news for, you know, for all the engineers as well as for uh, the riding public and obviously will help us with the flexibility we need to, to service all our lines. Um, back in March of 28, uh, 2018, we did not have a five-year capital plan. We didn't have a strategic plan. Um, and in 2017, we only had $60 million of hard money contract, construction contracts out on the street. Today, despite all the challenges of COVID, we have more than $4 billion in construction work going on. And in, in you know, your field particularly, I think you've seen out in, on, on your uh, practical uh, tests, you know, the new Raritan River Bridge is under construction. Long Slip Fill down in Hoboken. The County Yard Delco Leeds Storage and Inspection Facility in New Brunswick. Elizabeth, Perth Amboy Station to name just a few. And of course, you'll be watching the construction uh, uh, the new fully funded $1.8 billion portal bridge which is expected to be underway by the end of this year. So all these projects will not only uh, directly benefit you by improving the infrastructure, but also really is a significant boost to New Jersey's economy that you know, you should, we should all be very proud of. Um, I think one, you know, this really is a unique time in uh, New Jersey Transit's history as far as turning around with a really bright future. So uh, congratulations, you're really coming on, could not be coming on at a better time. And, uh, you know, very, very proud of all of you. And uh, thanks for getting us over, over this, uh, uh, this milestone. So with that, Governor, back to you. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin alluded to this, but it is worth repeating that it, fixing NJ Transit is not just an objective in and of itself. But when you are the densest state in America, and you sit between the largest market in the world in New York and one of the fastest growing markets in the country in Philadelphia, and you're on the Northeast Corridor. Getting NJ Transit right is a central element to our economic development strategy. 
and you all are part of that. So there is, again, that bigger picture at play here, and I can't thank you enough for your willingness to serve. It takes a village, and you need great legislative leaders, and there is not a better one than this guy. Please help me welcome the chair of the Senate Transportation Committee, a great leader, Senator, Middlesex County Zone, Pat Dagnan. First of all, Tyler, great comments. The, you know, they say that the thing that people are most afraid of is public speaking. I think you got a future in politics. <laughs> you know, my dad used to have an expression, actions speak louder than words. Have you been listening to the litany of all the accomplishments? We're talking about an agency that for eight years was ignored, not only ignored, devastated. These three people on this stage took over control of that agency, and it is now a model. Think, listen to what we talked about today. 103 new engineers, 103, a full roster of 393. That doesn't happen by mistake. That happens because of dedication. And on behalf of our state, I want to thank you, Governor, Commissioner, and President, for what you've done. <clears throat> And you know, Irish guys are known to do this. The governor stole my thought. If you, if you pick up the paper every morning, what do you read about in this morning's Star-Ledger? How housing is booming in the state of New Jersey. In some counties, it's up 20%. It's no coincidence that those counties, those towns that are booming, are the closest to mass transit. You are the economic engine of this state. You are the definition of essential employees. I won't blabber on. I just want to thank you on behalf of the whole state for what you've done and, and take on the challenge ahead. We need you. You are essential employees. Thank you. Pat, all, in all seriousness, you are an extraordinary leader and a great friend and a particularly outstanding leader on transportation matters. And I know I speak on behalf of Diane and Kevin when I say that you've been a great partner for us, so thank you. And amen, people are coming to the state right now and they're coming to, to, the, to the communities that have great public schools of which we've got many hundred and great transportation links. And that's the future of our state and you all are a part of that. I mentioned it takes a village. It takes great legislative leaders. It takes a great team of trainers. Uh, and it certainly takes labor leaders. And there's none better than this guy. He's been here, I think, at every one of these graduations. Please help me welcome the General Chairman of Smart Lo TD Local 60, a dear friend and a great leader, Chairman Jerome Johnson. Love you, buddy. Good morning. As the governor said, I'm Jerome Johnson. I represent the conductors and assistant conductors here at New Jersey Transit. Um, I would like to congratulate all of you for going through that arduous task and completing that rigorous program. You guys are going to be a great asset, especially working with the conductors and assistant conductors here at New Jersey Transit. Now, I would like to say, it's always an honor and pleasure to be up here with Governor Murphy, with Chairwoman, my big sister, Diane, Goodrest Cassetti, thank you, Senator Dagan, for everything you do for us. Kevin, appreciate you. Jimmy, Donnie, appreciate you guys. My boy Barry from Labor. But I'd just like to share a few things. New Jersey Transit has been neglected for many years prior to the governor taking office. There was a $300 million budget cut to $30 million with the swipe of a pen. There was poor leadership at the top just plain incompetent. Governor Murphy steps in and immediately funded New Jersey Transit's budget and continues to do so. The governor continues to work with labor organizations to find a source of dedicated funding so the operating budget and the capital budget can be used what it's, what it's supposed to be used for. The governor has always stated he will fix New Jersey Transit and bring it back to respectability even if it kills him. Well, guess what? He's still sitting here, and it hasn't killed him. The systematic changes that are either in place now or being implemented shows the governor's commitment to labor, to New Jersey Transit, and to the commuters via New Jersey Transit trains, buses, and light rail systems. Whether it's the, the completion of PTC, 
what a great job Mr. Fred Chinister and his staff did with that. Whether it's the Portal Bridge Project, the addressing of the systematic discrimination that was going on here at New Jersey Transit, the availability of vaccinations for the essential workers, the conductors, the engineers, the bus drivers who are represented by State Chairman Orlando Riley of the ATU, who all continue to work the front lines throughout this pandemic. And then last but not least, the commitment to beefing up the engineers' ranks, which is why we are here today. With Governor Murphy's leadership and dedication of his team and New Jersey Transit, led by the chairwoman, Diane Gutierrez Cassetti, Kevin, Jimmy Sicaglia, the acting general manager, General Superintendent Donnie Brochard, the vision for New Jersey Transit to get back to respectability will come to fruition. In closing, I would like to say, it's not a difficult task to support, the gov support Governor Murphy. I'm on vacation this week, but, I'm, but I made a commitment to be here. And this is the type of relationship that is needed and that we have. This is called integrity, respect, and most of all, trust. These are all the qualities this governor has today, and it's the best thing to happen to us and to the state of New Jersey. Thank you. Thank you, Jerome. Jerome, thank you for those gracious words, and thank you for being with us today when you, you didn't need to be, but you've been, always been here, and I take my hand off to you. Thank you. So now we are at the moment we have all been waiting for. And with that, I want to welcome back up the CEO and president of NJ Transit, Kevin Corbett. Thank you, Governor. And uh, Jerome, thanks for those kind words. It's been real teamwork. And uh, trust is, if you don't have trust, you, you, you know, what kind of team do you have? You know? So uh, you know, thanks so much, Jerome. Um, so it's now our time, as the Governor said, to recognize all the uh, soon-to-be graduates individually. Uh, when I call your name, please stand up. Give us a wave so everybody watching a live stream can see you. And then please uh, sit back down. Um, after I call the name of the last student, I'll ask the governor to come back to the podium for some closing remarks. As soon as the governor concludes his remarks, I'll ask all of you to stand in front of your seats with your certificates in hand for an appropriately uh, distance group photo. We'll come down uh, in front so that the, the camera can get us all together. Um, so uh, with that, uh, let's begin with our first uh, honoree, uh, Estanya Avril. All right, give a wave. <laughs> Uh, all right, Paul, Paul Caldwell. And uh, Michael Lifner. And uh, Cameron Mian. Uh, then we have Edward Montella. And uh, uh, sorry for the Morris family. We have we kept we've kept uh, we've held up to Tyler here, but uh, Tyler, take another bow. <laughs> and uh, James Riley. Uh, Trevor Tunison. And last but certainly not least, Anders Ervas. Uh, again, thanks so much. Can't wait to see you out, out, out on the field. And I'd like to now have the governor call back up for some closing remarks, and then we'll do the uh, group photo. Thank you, Kevin. Well done. There you go. <laughs> they could have used you in Alabama. Uh, I have very little to say other than congratulations. I have not said this in a while, but I truly believe that New Jersey is America's number one turnaround story. And within the New Jersey turnaround story, NJ Transit is New Jersey's number one transit, number one turnaround story. And you all are a big reason why we are turning this thing around. God bless you all. Congratulations, Diane, Pat, Jerome, Kevin, Tyler, to each and every one of you. Well done. Okay, so if we can get up for the group photo, we'll get the camera set up and we'll come down here. Thank you. 
Thank you very much.